Peace. Hotep. ETM Hotep. Welcome to the Seshu channel. You're tuned in to another episode of Kemet and Chill. Open discussion, Q&A. Reni Wujau Minib Eri Ma'at. And welcome again. Had to say it like that. Get my radio um, voice on. You're tuned in to W. KMT 90.9 on your FM dial. No, but peace to everyone. Um, shout out to everyone who's tuned in, all 10,000 of you. So tonight we're just doing a Kim and a Chill. And, you know, sooner or later I won't have to explain the format of our um, live streams, you know, different series of live streams we have. But I'll continue until, you know, until the wheels fall off, until you all get it. But um, for those who are tuned in for the first time, Kim and Chill is a series of live streams that we do where we just pull up out the clear blue and we allow the or we actually encourage the panel and or the chat to drive the conversation. And we only ask for two things, basically. One is our consistent uh, good behavior, good character, and then two any topic that we do talk about, it is at least it's related to ancient Egypt in some form or fashion. All right. Now, you know, um, because a lot of people have different interests in different things, not just ancient Egypt. Sometimes we will mention um, other things, you know, hot topics and whatnot. And so, you know, there's some flexibility there, but we want to make sure that the topics uh, do our best to keep the topics in the ballpark of ancient Egypt, a.k.a. Kemet, a.k.a. Simatawi, a.k.a. Tawi, a.k.a. Kenu, a.k.a. that that ultimate, uh, the best civilization in the ancient world. <laughs> um, so, yeah, not the only civilization. I know people are going to hear me say that and say, see, it's not all about ancient Kemet. It's other, it's other um, civilizations, other p kingdoms, other things, you know, on the continent and around the world, and they would be right. But ancient Egypt is all that in the bag of chips. That's why it's on the mouths. It's, on, it's coming out the mouths of so many people, even people who hate it. They have to talk about it. All right. So we want to kick things off. Like I said, it's just a give and a chill. Open discussion, Q&A, it's Friday night, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I do want to remind everyone again of the format. So this is the format that we are going to do our best, or I'll speak for myself, because I'm the one that ha has to actually um, implement this. Uh, this is the format we want to stick to. And, you know, the maximum video time that we want to have on any given session is two hours. So that's what you see, two hours with the first 10 minutes of, you know, making announcements, shout outs, intros and all of that good stuff. Then from there, we get into an hour a presentation, lecture or demonstration of something. You know, any of those things uh, can apply. But we, we dedicate an hour to that. And during that hour, you know, we're not really paying attention to um, the chat or, you know, the, any back and forth or questions in the chat. You really can't. But then as soon as that's done, an hour, then we open it up for the panel or the chat engagement. You know, whether, you know, commentary, what, what you thought on what was said before, criticisms, you know, um, sharing of information, questions, Q&A, whatever the case is. And then a five minute sign off all right all within two hour time frame so this 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 is the format that we've we've had for a while and I, as i said last night i've just butchered it and was not not really faithful to it and so i want to do better this time uh this time around from here on out all right so we're gonna do hard stops at two hours all right but now the exception to this is obviously on kim and chill we don't have a lecture like a pre-planned lecture or presentation to deal with. So 
the hour, really the hour and 45 minutes, if we go that long, um, is, you know, open ended, open discussion. All right. So, ma so mind you, the, the two hours is maximum. We don't have to go two hours. So uh, that's just given the max. All right. So just wanted to kind of lay that out and kind of put it out there for myself so you all can hold me to it. Help a brother out. All right. So with that being said, again, shout out to everyone in the chat who's tuned in. And let me bring in my co-host here. Hopefully you all can hear me clear. I, you know, I, I usually ask that, but I think we've been doing pretty good with that. So I haven't asked in a while. But let's bring the co-host on in here right there all right emmy cat aku can shy can you introduce yourself tell people you know where you hail from where you calling from where you where you signing in from what you're all about what you do you know i think you uh were telling me the other night that you were a combination of a catholic priestess and a hebrew israelite as well as a youth uf follower, i believe so can you break that down for us <laughs> my name is Imiket, and uh, yes, I've been dibbling and doubling in a few things here and there, but no, <laughs> I am just me, uh, you know, do a lot of things, um, study the language, um, you know, I do web development, graphic design, and all that kind of stuff, I just keep myself uh, rooted in reality, <laughs> And, uh, you know, yeah, so that's about it. And you all know me already, so I'm not going to say much. But definitely um, like this um, format that we are, you know, rolling in. And um, hopefully we get a lot of more discussions coming from the, you know, people actually joining um, the panel and, and having this, you know, good discussions and all that. That's what I'm definitely looking forward uh, from the second quarter of the year going forward. Alrighty. So, okay, well, we can put the link in there. You know, we, we inviting people on the chat, but I don't, I'm not sure if we have the link in there yet. We can put it in there. I'll pin it up to the top. So let's go ahead and open, open it up. So let's open the door. We sticking the key in the door. We unlocking the top lock. We unlocking the bottom lock. We took the chain off the door. Now the doors are open. So now we are actually officially open the doors to the room called Discussion. So now we have an open discussion. So, you know, pay attention to the chat. I'm going to turn the chat on the screen so we can see what you all have been talking about. And we're going to pass the mic around. We're going to pay attention to the chat. So, so listen, if you want to come on the panel, uh, feel free. It is now pinned to the top of the chat. Or type in your question, comment suggestion info sharing um who knows you may have been abducted by aliens last night you know tell us about it you know kind of related to Kemet though maybe you know maybe uh akhenaten you know came to you in the dream and and uh said there's only one true god aten all the other gods are fake and aten is the real biblical god you know, Moses was trying to tell everybody about Aten. People misunderstood Moses. You know, and Noah is really Newark. Mm. <laughs> now, let me stop because pe people are going <laughs> to people going to take what I'm saying and they're going to clip it up. Well, Joe lost his mind. See, I told you there was something I couldn't put my finger on it. But Joe, you know, Joe was special. You're talking about short bus shorty. I, th I think he rode the short bus a few times. Yeah. So um but let's get it in. Go ahead. Let's get let's get it in. So shout out to to everyone. Um Omar Reed, Philatist, Teddy was uh excuse me, Teddy Usir Maadra Seneferu, uh Rowan Fall, Ramza, uh Sonat Mika, Tamika, Dandara, peace, James Powell, peace. Sonet Safa, 
the voice of reasoning. That's that's my nickname for Sunet Safa. Um, Sharp Spear, peace. All right, so I think we got some shout outs uh, taken care of. And Mika firstly says, ask Brother Jabari, <laughs> ask Brother Jabari, he speaks to ghosts. Y'all are not right. Y'all need to leave the Brother Jabari alone. You know what? Uh, speaking of the Brother Jabari, um, someone mentioned that I was accused of hating on the brother Jabari. Now I, I I don't pay attention to too much of that because you know I like I said I don't get involved with any of that stuff. But um, hopefully people just don't believe what what people say at face value. And if they do, I don't I don't really give into it because my 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 thing is if. If somebody can say something about somebody else outside of their presence to someone and that someone just believes them without, you know, any further investigation, just wholeheartedly drinks the Kool-Aid and swallows that, then those are people that I don't I don't need around anyway. I mean, that's not that's not my crowd. So that's how I feel about it. So, you know, when stuff like that happens, um, you know, if you all ever hear hear things or something like that, and you wonder why, you know, what's Wujao gonna say about it? Well, guess what? Wujao is still just doing his thing, mind his business. I don't, you know, I don't get involved with that because I I just think that a lot of that is immaturity. Um, but because everybody knows that I don't I don't hate on Jabari. As a matter of fact, I actually take up for Jabari, especially recently. Um, the brother Garfield had did a show called Black Colts. And he included um, Nature Boy, Young Pharaoh. Um, what was the other one? Nature Boy, Young Pharaoh. Who was the third person? It was four people. Jabari was one of them, but it, but I'm missing one. Nature Boy, Young Pharaoh, Jabari, and... Who else? Uh, say polite. Yeah, there you go. Polite. And it was it was polite. Oh, 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 no, William Carson. That's right. That's right. It wasn't polite. He didn't he didn't have polite on on there. He had uh Billy Carson. Yep. And and I saw I saw um a lot of Garfield's show and it and it and it was crazy. Like like, you know, Garfield pointing that stuff out and showing those clips. Um, it was interesting to me, but when I, when I went live and spoke about it, I, I, um, I took up for Jabari actually by saying that I don't think Jabari would fit in. I, w I don't think Jabari should be held up next to those others that those other three, I, I really don't. That's my personal opinion. Um, because just because Jabari, um, says that he heard, um, a voice, you know, a voice speak to him coming from a mummy's coffin and things like that. I don't think that that's comparable to the other the others that uh, Garfield was comparing. But, you know, I understand Garfield's overall point um, and everything. But still. But anyway, you know, I think people know that I don't I don't hate on um, any of any of those people. I really don't. I don't hate on anybody. I don't I don't that I don't know. I deal with information. And I'm, and I'm and I try to my best to be surgical with it. I don't do the broad strokes, the the broad uh, painting or broad sweeping and things like that because I don't think that I think that's lazy. So if I disagree with someone, I don't disagree with someone. I disagree with someone's argument or someone's claim, and I and I'm very specific because somebody could could make 10 claims and nine of the claims could be on point and evidence supports it. And therefore I'll support it because I roll with the evidence. But on that 10th claim that, that one out of, out of 10, they could be wrong. There's no evidence for it or whatever. And I'll say something, but it's, but when I say something, it's only about that 10th claim. It's not about the person and it's not about all of their claims. And I think that people need more people need to.
to practice that. You know, people don't do everything the same way. Um, and I don't expect people to do things like me. I'm not special, but I'm just sharing that's my thoughts and how I process those things like things like that. I don't do this, the broad stroke and sweeping. I do recognize patterns. I'm not naive, but I see patterns. And when people form patterns of behavior, then, you know, we, we got to take it to a different level. But anyway, so. Um, but yeah, so Mika. Uh, um, since you brought up Jabari's name, I just want to make sure people understand that I don't I don't hate on Brother Jabari. I've never met Jabari. And actually, not only do I not hate on Jabari, I actually applaud Jabari, Jabari's um, efforts in um, create, you know, in 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 dealing with the shrine of my eye. As I always say, when people can can get people together and to do something in a in a progressive way, even if I may not agree with every detail of everything that's done or whatever i still have to acknowledge the um the progressive and the and the, and the positive things or the things that i do agree with you know so actually i think um everybody that's um you know that's kept up with what you do and kept up with especially this channel and even just other um other platforms that you've been on would actually know that um, it is actually the other way around. When people actually try to bring inf info to you uh, to try to create some kind of rift <laughs> between maybe you and Jabari and whatnot, you know, you've always been more like a stickler to the information. And I know we have two videos on this archive from that I can pinpoint specifically where you put us under the fire. Like it was, um, you know, we were on a panel and, and there was a lot going on with Jabari say Jabari did this. And then you were like, um, well, pre present the evidences. And when everything came out of the wash, he was like, uh, like he said, like um, what everybody was saying about Jabari was actually false. He was just assumptions and whatnot. And that's actually one of those um, times I remember where um, it was clear, like um, with what you just say that you, you stick to the information so whatever it is that people try to bring to you about Jabari I've always seen where if something does not make sense you'd be like well Jabari is not wrong on this or, or this is what you what you're trying to say on this is this this and that and all the time I think the only place where you corrected something that people say Jabari say was the white Tamahu but even that you directed it to the to the source of the information which was uh, to the source of that um, terminology which wasn't even Jabari in the first place so um, from the track record, um, every time that has been brought up to kind of create this conflict that probably might lead to a debate or whatever, because people really have tried to do that. You've always uh, been, you know, very consistent with just sticking to the information. And most of the time, the accusations actually that come out about Jabari has always been false in that sense. And you've made it very clear that that's just, that's just false. If this is the information, that's just false. But I guess people uh, might not like Jabari and obviously he deals with... Um, you know, with Kemet. And so people want to have, um, you know, you know, something about, okay, well, if, you know, if Ujau can say that Jabari is wrong on this, then we have one up on, on, on Jabari, but that hasn't happened when it comes to you. So I, I would just say that, you know, that that's the case. That's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. It has always been with you. You stick to the information. What did Jabari say? Okay. Let's look at that particular information. And most of the time it's just been false accusation. Yep. So I don't get involved with that. So everyone can miss me with that. But I'm, I'm just saying I brought it up, I guess, Mika, because Mika mentioned Jabari's name. Just wanted to make sure we everybody has that understanding. They can hear from me that I don't I've never met Jabari. And I actually think Jabari is doing a, a good job um, uh, overall. You know, I mean, his his um, his his works, he wear his work. He's transparent with what he does. Trying to my ad, they, they go live every now and then. Um, I, I, I saw, see their live, uh, live streams when they give, uh, their Sunday sessions, uh, saw clips of a few of them. I was able to watch and all, and then, you know, I think Jabari comes out of, and I'm, I may be wrong. Like I said, I don't, I don't know, uh, Jabari, I never met him, but just from what I've seen of him, I believe he's, he comes out of the Asara Set Society. Well, I know he was, he was at one point affiliated with it in some form or fashion. Um, I think that's my first time seeing Jabari when he 
when he was associated or affiliated with it in some form or fashion. Um, I'm not sure. But anyway, all right, so that's that's enough about um, the brother Jabari. And, uh, well, I don't think that's about enough because I see on the chat uh, Brother Garfield is saying, good job at what? I guess what is uh, <laughs> Jabari is doing a good job at what? Okay, so, yeah, I don't want to jump, like, so jump around. Uh, I'm going through the going through the chat, you know, in, in chronological order. But to get to that point, um, like I said, see, now, if Garfield's in the house, I haven't even seen, I haven't even scrolled down enough to see the comments yet, uh, Emmy Kett. But um, if Garfield's in the house, see, I understand now, in Garfield's defense, uh, now you see, I'm I'm a voice of reasoning, you know. But in Garfield's defense, um, not that he needs to be defended or anything, but um, I understand what Garfield is saying or said in the video about um, Nature Boy, about um, Billy Carson. Uh, who's the other one? That's the one I I didn't forget the first time. Nature Boy. Billy Carson, Jabari, and who's the other one? Now I'm, I'm now mix it up. Anyway, Garfield's point, you know, the title was Black Colts and everything. And so, but I still don't think that Jabari would be um, side by side with, with the other three. But I get the point because, you know, if you think about it, See, see, Garfield's point, this is this is my takeaway from what Garfield was saying when it comes to Jabari. OK, here's the thing. And, and I know it is definitely partially a New York thing because you got to think about it. These people come on 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 the platforms and they dog Hebrew Israelites. They dog Christians or Christianity, you know, um, some of them do it harshly, some of them do it, you know, not so harshly, but but they basically, you know, kind of uh, shun Hebrew Israelites, uh, Christianity, uh, the Bible, at least how they interpret everything and whatnot. And so I so what I took away from what Garfield was saying is more so it seems hypocritical a bit, because if Jabari is saying that he does things or believes certain things but that's what christians do that's what that's what you know some some of the hebrew israelites do and everything like that and on those grounds you know that's a uh those are those are valid points to be made and and discussed but but i think people are going to take it like as if garfield is saying jabari's like nature boy and and I, i'll say this I, even though i don't know jabari i'm gonna I'm say this on jabari's behalf he is not like Nature Boy. <laughs> Nature Boy should have been by himself. Oh, Garfield's in here. Let me let Garfield in. Nature oh, Boy. Boy. Nature Boy needs his own level of category. Uh, Garfield. Let me let Garfield <laughs> in. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, Garfield. <laughs> but before you let Garfield uh, talk. Oh, uh, you put me on the spot with that part, boy. I can't say nothing. I got to be solid now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So real quick, sorry to interrupt you, Garfield. I'll let you uh, talk after that. Well, I was just saying that um, what you said is a good point because um, people just have to understand the context of you know these conversations that go 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 on. So people always miss the con the context of, of you know of the conversation. So in that in that particular context, like you said it, then you know obviously that makes a big difference. Yeah, but I mean, I, I I say this: if you throw a stone, that there's an old saying in Jamaica, and it, it's it's here too. If you throw a stone in a pig's pen, the one that squeal got hit. And I'm yeah. saying, I'm, I'm if you read the comments, because I, sometimes I don't post comments on my channel because it's so so disrespectful. But this time, the video has almost over forty thousand views. So if you look at my other videos, you see four thousand, five thousand, four thousand. This video has gone viral with yeah. the black cop. It has gone. And I think that's why Jabari wanted to respond. Now, I noticed something about this community. We could bang. Garfield is known to bang on the Hebrews, the Christians, whatever. Bible believers. But when I bang on something that goes wrong within the comedic community, it seems like now I'm hating. I'm not hating the Hebrews when I bang on them. But if I bang on somebody he, uh, that, that follows the comedic tradition, I am a hater. 
And if you've seen my channel from day one, I confront information that I think is misinformation. I don't care who it is. Um, let's use Shaka Amos as an example. I, I didn't have nothing personal against Shaka, but when I decided to respond to when he called me out, me and Jabari out, all of a sudden now I hate Shaka Amos. I'm like, what? what? So when he called me out, he never hated Garfield. But when Garfield answered and responded to him, which he has never responded to. It was all hate. Garfield is a hater. Now with Jabari, the issue with Jabari is I know Jabari a little better than a lot of people. And one of the reasons I say that because I was on a conversation with Jabari and Jabari straight cussed out Brother Ankh. When I mean he cussed out Brother Ankh, I mean Brother, we you know how Brother Ankh is with Jao. You know him better than me. Brother Ankh had nothing to say after Jabari cussed him out. When I mean cussed him out, straight cussed him out on the phone. And this was in our preparation for the debate with the Christians, right? Mm -hmm. Now, and 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 Dr. Mayat was on the phone. We was all we were just so shocked that like we couldn't believe it was Jabari. So when people said they know Jabari, no, you don't know Jabari. You don't know Jabari. Trust me, I don't know Jabari. But I'm not here to talk bad about Jabari. What I'm here to talk about is the information anyway. Let's get back to the information. I don't have anything personal against Jabari, but I do have a problem with people teaching the same foolishness for 40 years and let Jabari slide. And I'll, I'll give a quick example. The Immaculate Conception. If you ask anybody in the comedic community, what is the Immaculate Conception? We will say it has to do with Jesus and the virgin birth. 99.9% .9 of the people say that. It has nothing to do with the virgin birth. It has to do with Mary and not having original sin. But everybody in the community teaches that there's an immaculate conception in Kemet. So last night when I was on Sarnetta, I said, I'll give you $5,000 if somebody could prove to me the immaculate comes. I know it's not there because the community doesn't know that immaculate conception has nothing to do with the virgin birth. This is how yeah. crazy, and if I point that out, I'm a hater. Now, Jabari teaches Immaculate Conception is the virgin birth. If I check him, I'm hating. I'm not. I'm like, why do we allow these people to use, say, Kemet, represent the greatest empire ever existed, but mischristianize Egyptian, uh, for lack of a, um, Christianize Kemetic teachings? Because that's what we're doing. The triad, the triad gods in, in, in Kemet is Trinity. The um this is the virgin birth. This is um dying and resurrection. This is a rule died and resurrected. And, and everything you could find every storyline you want in Kemet, by the way. There's not a teaching in the Bible you can't find in Kemet. If you look, if you don't, if you if you if if you interpret it the way you want to, to just to be honest. Because Nith, that they say in, in English, Nith had um had a virgin birth. But because they want to push the Heru, Osiris, and um a set angle to Jesus, Mary, and God, they only use them to say they connect with Christianity, but don't use no other person in, 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 in Egyptian culture. And that's what they're doing. They're Christianizing the culture, and I'm pointing it out. And how I point it out is I'm showing that the sources that they use is Gerald Massey, Kersey Graves, Tom Harper, Freakin' Gandhi, The Jesus Mysteries, Achara S. D. M. Murdoch, um, what's the other guy? Maccabi, the one that I, I was talking to you about yesterday with Jao, and and a yeah, couple yeah. more. And the issue is, and, and I don't know if people know this. Cursey Gray, sixteen crucified saviors. Did people know? Do people know that he believes Jesus is real, and the sixteen crucified saviors, he believes they're real too. I don't know if people even read Cursey Gray's book and realize he believes all these people are real. But they're so. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So let me ask you. Oh, let me ask you a question because. Because see, I, I I saw your video. I I can understand why why the video went viral and have forty k because the topic of cults and then the people you displayed on there, especially especially Nature Boy. I mean, mm -hmm. Nature Boy takes the cake. I mean, I I don't know if anybody would disagree me agree with me on that. Um, that's a very important topic. That's that's that needs to be spoken of because because it is a problem in our communities uh you know the gullibility 
uh, the young impressionable minds being, you know, people drinking the Kool-Aid and stuff like that. So that's that's a hot topic to, to really get into because that deals with psychology. I mean, that that's a lot to unpack, you know, with that. So the topic itself is, is there. But let me ask you this question. So so with what you just said, right, you said you said a lot of people don't know the difference between an immaculate conception versus the, a virgin birth and whatnot. And then and then um, the 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 16 crucified author and how he, what he actually believes himself and stuff. So, so what do you think? So in order to, in order for people to know about that, what do you think needs to happen? Because I know you wrote a book on, um, the mis the misconception of, um, uh, Hebrew, dang, I right. forgot the title. He, yeah. The, he, he, of missing, you're the one that did the cover. How are you going to forget? I know. I know. I, I forgot. You I forgot the, yourself right now. <laughs> the, you the, final, yourself right the, now. the title of the, of the book. <laughs> But yeah. see, my, my, mm -hmm. my thing is that I push education, like I push, you know, the information so that people will know these things. And so, uh, so, so are you and Jabari still slated to, to debate each other or what? Or how is that going? Um, nothing, nothing has changed yet. But I mean, you see, another thing too is with Jabari is this, right? Jabari will take shots, but when he takes shots at people, he'll do it in such a slick way. Right. There's a there was a sister I had um, a little relationship with in the community. Right. Very popular sister. And apparently when me and the sister stopped talking, she went to Jabari. I didn't know that until two years ago. So two years ago now. So every time he gets a chance, he's like, Garfield, if I wanted to be personal, I would bring up that, that the sisters that come to me. I, he, then he's then he's trying to talk the other day like I have these haremas. This harem, like I got a harem now, mm. where I heard all these sisters and they run to him for help. That's the impression he gave the other night. But I knew he was throwing a shot. A lot of people don't realize he's throwing a shot. He's trying to say that I know this about you. So if you continue to come at me, I will reveal this. You know, then he mm. said, um, he pulled a chief X one time. I thought you where's your book? He was following the Chief X playbook, throwing shots. Nobody said nothing to Jabari. Nobody. And I just took it. I'm like, okay, that's what you do. So when I throw shots now, I like to throw shots and hurt people's feelings because I don't play games. So when I said the other night, you have a, a sperm sperm count problem, I did it on purpose. I oh, I didn't I said, even know you, you said you that. Don't, you, you, don't, you don't have kids why because you got a sperm why count problem. Why y'all doing that to each other? That's no, crazy. because why is, he do, why is he doing it? No, Nobody's I'm saying, checking to, him. To each other. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, to, see, you all know each other. Like, you you, you all have met. You all have broken bread. You sat down and spoke to, spoken to each other and, and then and online. So, so that's, you know, you all are in that space. See, I, I've never um, met him. Uh, I never met you in person yet. Not yet. At least, you know, got when you come down to this way, you got to hook up. But but that goes for anybody. But um, see, you all have a relationship and, and I can only watch as a as a bystander um, that unfold. And I and I know that people take ch take shots at each other. But to me, that's part of the, the New York um, debating culture, like the subculture of New York debating. That's how I see it, because I think everybody in New York does that. Like every, everybody, everybody does that from the Sarah Sutton Setis, whoever he debating and, and his opponent back to him and whoever else. Polite does it, did it. Um, Jabari, everybody. To me, hey, I see that answer, all the time. To answer, to answer your question, by the way, I am going to do a book called Misconceptions and Misinformation by the Egyptomaniacs. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh -oh. and, and the reason why I'm going to say that is because we have to clean up. You see, lies are easily believed more than the truth now look at you Ujau. you have a book you you had a conversation with jabari i remember years ago and i'm sure you still have the clips of it on the facebook where he talked about um yoga egyptian yoga right yeah yeah and i guarantee you after you pointed out to him and said to him this is what happens he's like well i couldn't walk or something and the yoga helped me to walk my back and he said all this stuff which is all hogwash Right. And what happened is even after you explained it to him, I guarantee you two days later, he would probably teach the same thing, continue to teach Egyptian yoga.
Now, look at this now. If I bring out something to Jabari, I don't expect Jabari to change because this is what people who run cults do. And people say, why you call it a cult? It's a religious organization with a religious leader. And for one, he doesn't do anything wrong. And you're told you can't be a member of one shrine and be a member of another shrine and continue. You can't, you can't do that stuff. It has all the things. You see, people don't know the definition of a cult. He is a cult. You have good cults and you have crazy cults. You have cults. I'm not, not good cults. You have cults and you have crazy cults. So when people see me compare him to, to Nature Boy or whatever, it wasn't a shot. I was just saying, brah, you talking about you talking to mummies. That's nuts. You see, you see, um, you see an energy. You say you saw people begging you in Puerto Rico and all of a sudden this energy appears and you see the energy, then all of a sudden you turn around, the energy is gone. The person is gone. <laughs> but hold on, Garfield. You could you you at least gotta separate give some uh, uh, separation from Jabari and, and the others, oh, especially Nature, Nature Boy, because like, for example, th like stealing is stealing. A thief is a thief, right? But you have grand larceny and then you have misdemeanor, you know, petty theft. Like if somebody steals a snicker bar versus somebody stealing like a car lot of cars and, and, and bank heist, that's the, you know, that's the level Nature Boy is on. He's 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 talking to aliens. He's in another dimension. He's downloaded. He's at sixty percent downloaded information. <laughs> Come on, you can't. Yeah, I was I was gonna say I was just gonna ask Garfield like because when you were talking about how y'all throw shots at each other, I was just gonna ask if you put him on that uh, cuckoo head list of cult members just to get at him because because that, that 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 whole list like um I mean those people are way out there like you know. As opposed to somebody saying, uh, you know, uh, you know, talking to mummies and things of that nature, because, because uh, I would see why he would be upset in a way that, um, that, um, obviously he went viral, and you know, once something goes viral, and he has this um, organization that, um, you know, there's a reputation with it that they have, um, obviously, um, you know, wholesome adult people who are members of it. And so, you know, obviously, if you're a member of that organization, you don't want to be classified as people who are like brainwashed and things of that nature. So do you think that's one part of why he would be upset, obviously, with the, you know, that particular video going viral? Because once well, it goes viral, he's, you know, he's, uh, he, he and the organization will be linked with people like, um, you know, uh, Nature Boy, you know, and, and that's kind of extreme, like that particular kind of craziness and cookiness that you know that particular well, uh, well you know what in part two he's gonna be in part two because he doubled down when he was on Sarnetta the other day he doubled down he said I do speak to the ancestors and you see that's another thing what a cult is when a cult leader says that they could do stuff that you can't do that's a sign of a cult so when he talks to the ancestors he's saying that he's getting responses from the ancestors and the people who are members are saying, damn, I want to get to where he is because I want ancestors to talk to me too. So that's what a cult leader does. I was in the Nation of Islam. Farrakhan said he could control the weather. I believed him. I literally believed him. And they gave an example in 1994 how he destroyed all of Mississippi or something with floods. <laughs> it was crazy. This is what cult leaders do. They could do something extraordinary to attract people so that you will join and pay all this money to be a priest so you could have the same power he has. That's a cult. Now you, now you know that I am all too familiar with a cult. <laughs> so you are preaching to the choir right now. You preaching to the choir. I know I know what a cult is and what a cult looks like. The the patterns, the trimmings and things like that. So yeah. But you know what? So what I would say to you, though, if, if you and Jabari are, are going to have a, a good, um, you know, debate on, on the points and whatnot. Yeah, man, just just uh, yeah, just just uh, hopefully both of you all will stick to the information and, and really and we can all learn something from it. Because I because I, I think people should know the difference between an immaculate conception, what it really is versus a virgin birth and the difference if there is one and and so on and so forth because little things like that you're right people don't don't know we take it for granted we you know people think immaculate conception and virgin birth people don't even say immaculate conception conception anymore they just say virgin birth oh the virgin mary the virgin mary the virgin mary you know mm -hmm. um 
and then yep. they associate with with ISIS. But that's that that always uh, was weird to me because Osiris, if if okay, if if they pair that those three people up, um, you know, Mary, Jesus, and then who's Jesus' father then? Because in God, Kemet, thank God, thank God, God is his father. He's a demigod, which is totally yeah. different. Yeah, but okay, so God is 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 Jesus's father, but and what and how? Like, how did that happen? Like, what 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 are the circumstances around that? Why why put the Joseph Holy, through the that? Holy, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit came and impregnated Mary. Yeah, but if the Holy Spirit impreg the act of impregnating means to conceive, you have to have a uh, sperm. It's plus Jesus was a male child, and Mary is a woman. Women have it's, XX it's, it's chromosomes. It's a, mir it's a miraculous birth. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. The guy, there's a guy that called in and saw that the other day. I, I, I kid you not, bro, and said that they, they found Jesus' body and blood. And when they tested the blood, it did not have the wide, the paternal marker in it. I'm t <laughs> I, 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 bro, I swear, I swear <laughs> to you, bro. That's what the dude said. I was like, wow. Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you. You see, you see, and now, you see, this is, this is, the, this is the issue. I don't... I don't know if people know me like how you know me, Ujawa, how I defended Kemet against Zion Lex. And how I stood up for Kemet, like Kemet was like the greatest, well, it is the greatest empire ever. And I stood up for Kemet. They all love me when I'm doing that. But when I'm pointing out the craziness in Kemet, I'm hating. I don't have no hatred for Jabari. I just give him what he gives me. When he throws his words, I throw my words too. I treat people the way I want to be treated. That's my religion. I treat people the way I want to be treated. So if you throw a shot, I'm going to throw a shot too. But just worry that my shot might be a little a, a deeper dagger than yours. That's all it is. Because people throw right. shots all the time. I but, hope that... Um... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but I was going to... Um, let me go back to the, um, the information for a second. As far as um, Jesus' birth and the, 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 tr the Trinity and all that stuff... Um, I, I just, I just, I just think. I mean, we have they have they have a triad gods in Canaan, they have triad gods in Suma, they have triad gods in Egypt. We got tons of triad gods concepts in Egypt, and but it has to be connected to Osiris and Aset. If it's not connected to them and Horus, it don't make sense. But it makes sense if you know you understand. That's why I'm saying the Christianizing of Egypt. This is what they're doing, and this is not from anybody in our community teaching this this is from outsiders interpreting egypt the way they want to do gerald massey sean did a whole video on my channel about gerald massey and his misinformation let me ask you this too uh -huh. um since you, you're you're a linguistic guy with this stuff the, the krst stuff does it mean christ no krst no it doesn't mean messiah it doesn't mean to anoint remember remember mashiach or messiahs mm -hmm. or christos are words that mean anointed uh mm -hmm. the the verb the act of anointing or wiping clean something or as a person now it means the anointed one who was cleaned or wiped away or, or the anointer one who does right. the wiping and no caressed is a is a um burial it's a it's a burial it's not it doesn't mean to anoint so no it's just that it sounds wow. the same caressed versus christos or christ and all so that, but then, me, but, then, but, then but then, but then, but then, but then people will play around with the word Krishna. If you, if you want to start, start to sound like stuff. But let me ask you this. Have you heard people in the community though, say that KRST is the root of the word Christ? Yeah. 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 I heard that. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I, I've already, I, I've, I've dealt okay. with that. I, I've dealt with that even in the Bible. See, look, even in John where it says we have found the, Mas we have found the Messiah which is being interpreted as Christ, that's in the English. But when you look in the Greek, it says we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted as Christos. So in the Greek language, they have a word for, for Messiah and a word Christos, and they equated it right there in that, in that portion of the Bible. So I, I talked about that years ago. Yeah, and just to note, it's actually a Q. Uh, it's a K with a dot in, 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 at the bottom, but it's usually a Q. So, you know, people just it's really think... A, it's it's really a what's this? It's really a Q, as in the, the queen, Q as in queen? Uh, yeah, but obviously Q has the sound k, like, like queen. Oh, okay. You know, See, I it's it's, it's literally a Q. Uh, it's just translated with a K with a dot at the bottom, which is actually a Q. 
Mm, yes, a Q that's sound. Very go, that's very interesting. Go, that's not Christ or anything like that. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I I always thought that was weird. Um, but I mean, what's even weirder is is the whole pairing the whole story up. I mean, um, people say that uh, Isis wasn't touched, but yet she's mounted in one scene. She's mounted as a as a bird, as a kite. They call the bird a kite or a falcon on a missing phallus and whatnot. Hell, on mm. high up on Os- Osir's uh, stomach, not even where his his uh, phallus would be if if it was a real person laying there. So it's, I mean, it's a lot to talk about, and I don't I don't I don't get into it. I did that. I, I did it years ago. I used to argue back and forth. You know, I used to argue back and forth, but I don't do it anymore because people have haven't sparked enough interest for me because nobody shows evidence. These are all conjecture and trying to just match things, you know, based based on how things sound or or whatever. But they don't show a direct connection to these things. And I'm waiting for somebody to do it because that's that's interesting. But I don't you know, I don't see it done. That's why that's why I'm asking you when you and Jabari do you all do go through with the debate. um, Yeah, I'll be interested in, in watching just to see what comes out of out of it on both sides. So, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a interesting dialogue because um, I have the entire Kemetic shrine community basically against what I'm saying because they have to. I think they use. You see, I don't mind people doing cross comparison research in the ancient Near East, but when you do it from a without a methodology, it causes a problem because, for example, they like this first argument with Kemet. Kemet has to be first. You know, in, in, in Sumer, they have the triad. In Canaan, they have the triad gods with um with Astareth, um, Anat, and another god, right? But that triad god could not be the influence for the Trinity. It has to be from Kemet. It has to be, it can't be from Sumer either. It has to be from Kemet. And I think that's one of the biggest things with the community. Communities are so beautiful and wonderful, it's hard for us to say it's not from there. You know, and I think when Dr. Ben said certain things, Dr. Clark, um, Asa Hilliard, all the greats, it does it does resonated with us as a community that we had a culture that we could look to that was great. Again, skipping over Western Central Africa. But the issue is Kemet has to always be first. I heard somebody say yesterday a screwdriver. They heard Kemet was the first to use a screwdriver. Or uh, you know, it, it, it's just it's just it's just ridiculous, and that's what that's what I'm fighting. I don't see, care if anybody wants, you know. But go ahead. That's bro. really the now I'm saying that's really you know that's really the romanticism that's going on. You got commercial com, commercialism, and then romanticism of of ancient Egypt. That's definitely out there. It's it's rampant. But see, that, now my stance, which is what I do not like about all of these organizations, is. They didn't approach ancient Egypt by way of the language. And, and, and anybody who takes this stuff serious knows that the only way that you can have an understanding of any culture that's not your own is by way of that culture's language. If you, if you don't at least get the basics of the language down, you're going to be handicapped. And all of these organizations from the Asar Set Society to, to all of the shrines and, and temples that we know of today, none of them... Uh, approached it from the foundation or the basis of the language so so it's a lot of repair and, and patchwork after the fact hindsight stuff hindsight and that's and that's what that's what i would fault all these um all of these you know organizations with they didn't approach it through the language that's why I, you know i took a take a different approach if it's the language or nothing with me because the only way we'll know about ancient egypt is is by what by way of what they left behind and if you can't read and understand a language, at least at the basic level, then then what are you doing? You can't you can't build a foundation on 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 that if you don't have that under your belt. And so that's what I fault all of these organizations. You know, um, I don't I don't pick on any one, all of them, because now I I think a lot of them do do great things as well. Like the Assad Set Society under Raoul Nefer Amin, um, you know, I know a few of their members, and over the years. And that organization has been around since 1970, I believe. And they they do some great things, and they they've they have some great things going on. But then they have things that are that are wrong. 
that they don't have evidence for and stuff, and it's all, and it's because they didn't approach the language. I mean, they didn't approach the culture by way of the language. They rely on breasted. They rely on budge and stuff. They misspell words. They they misappropriate things, and um, and 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 that's that's okay because we can all make mistakes. But then when those mistakes are pointed out, then what you say kind of comes into play, because then it gets kind of kind of cultish when when you try to unpack and and show things and then they refuse and then they or they ignore it and they keep on that's when i'm like okay nah this is there's some extra stuff i i can't i can't do that <laughs> you know so like you said the comedic yoga thing um the brother yasir i forgot yasir lawrence i believe that's his name the elder brother he's he's like the prominent comedic yoga person um that that we we all see in the pictures and stuff and he took offense and was defensive of me doing my presentation on aspective art versus perspective art using comedic yoga as as my case study. And so he took offense because that's his thing. That's that's his that's his whole thing. Like that's his that's man, that's everything to him. And I was trying to tell him that I wasn't attacking comedic, comedic yoga um, or whatever. I actually think it's, it's, it's good. I actually know that it's helped people um physically health wise that you know with the body the stretch the muscles the um circulation um and all kinds of things i know that for a fact but what i was saying my point was with that was that the positions that people are doing today are not ancient egyptian positions no ancient egyptian in antiquity put themselves in those positions for anything whether you call it comedic yoga or not they didn't do that that's that's just an artistic style that we see on the walls that that people today are emulating. So if if they say that, then I'm cool with it. That's it. That, that, that was my whole thing. Like, don't say don't tell people that this is what the Egyptians did when they, that's not what they did. And I proved it. Can't nobody refute it. They can get mad all they want to. And that's the that's the post you're talking about. Jabari came on and said something because I think he and Yasir Lawrence are, um, are, are, are they know each other. Or colleagues of of each other, and so he came in defense of that, and I, I tried to explain to Jabari that I wasn't attacking, attacking that. But nobody's coming back on that Tamahu thing. Tamahu New Europeans. Tamahu. The word Tamahu is not even the word Tamahu. That was that was. It started off with Champollion, and then Gerald Massey, in his sixth volume, then he butchered it. He said it means creative, creative white people. It does not you mean know, anything. You know, you know, you know. I was in the NOI at the time, so when we found that. And our ball was giving us a story about that too. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, Elijah is right. Look, they got a word in Kemet for created white people. So Yakub's story is true. <laughs> yeah. So that was, yeah, that, was that was that was but crazy. that's that's that that was all false. That was all false. As a matter of fact, you see, do you see um you see these pictures behind let me put my picture big. You see, you see these image this image, these figures um behind the words right here on my picture? Yeah. Uh huh. Those are Tamahus. Okay. So they can't be white people. I mean, just just on lookership, if you know Ooh. people play the lookership game, those are those are. Ch it's, it's not even pronounced. It's we don't. Nobody pronounces it Tamahu. Uh, it's Chamehu, and these are the Libyans. Chamehu are one of the major groups of Libyans. You got Chahinu and Chamehu. All right. So Ujau, we know. You've been saying this for three to four, three to four years, I think. Right now, if this is brought to him and he continues to say it, what does that mean? Yeah, then then that's a, that's a that's a, yeah that's a, that's that's when things got to shift. Because cult leaders can't admit in public that they're wrong. They can't admit that they're wrong. That's one. That's 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 one of the, the factors in, in in with a cult. The leader can't. He got to act perfect. You gotta act perfect. Yeah, that's that's where I would have a problem because we 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 can't be um, we have to be able to open minded. That's that's a part of being having good character, being able to adjust and follow the evidence, because it's not about what you believe for belief's sake. It's it's you accept the evidence wherever the evidence takes you. You know, you gotta cast your sail up, and the evidence becomes the wind, and let it drive you in the direction it goes. That's it. If people don't have that philosophy behind their studies then then that's confirmation bias that's bias that's that's all kinds of things you know 
Hey, so I forgot to ask that. you this. There's, there's a guy that's on Sunday that that's a follower of Dr. York. He allegedly said, I heard from um, a guy that interviewed him the other day, saying that he saw Dr. York on the ground walking like a dog. Literally. It's like how Jabari said he saw the person in Puerto Rico spinning all that spirit stuff. He took it further. He said he saw, literally saw Dr. York on the ground walking around him. Literally. What, what do you mean? Walking like a dog on all fours? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my first time hearing that. I, you know, that's, I mean, people will say anything. I, I've never heard that. I've never heard that. I've heard people say that, that, that York um, grew, you know, two feet higher than he was and, or shrunk two feet shorter than he was, you know, and all that other kind of stuff. I heard that, but I've never heard somebody say that he was on all fours walking around like a dog. And, and, and he's a follower saying that? Yeah, yeah. I talked to you about it in the back chat. I talked to you about it in the back chat. Okay, yeah, that's 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 weird. That's weird. Uh, but let me. I want to show this picture since since we're bringing this up. I want I want um. Uh, let's see. Right, let me, let me jump off because I don't want to okay. the mic tonight. But well, peace, love. Thanks for letting me coming on. I'm gonna listen right. to the beginning and see see what y'all was talking about before. Anyway. All right, okay. Peace, yeah. Love. Yeah. Man. All right. Peace. Peace. All right. Peace. So I mean, I just want to share this picture with with the with the chat. While while we, while we while I brought this topic up of Tamahu, just real quick, and then we can we can keep keep the flow going. We kind of spent on on time on uh, Jabari there, but hopefully, if Jabari hears this or people uh, go run and tell that that they'll let Jabari, the brother Jabari, know that um yeah, everything's all good. Um. What I want to do is pull this up. Okay. I'm going to show you all a picture of, because, you know, demonstration beats conversation. Y'all, y'all, you all know what time it is. That's, that's the same. Demonstration beats conversation each and every time. So what I'm about to show you all right here is a actual primary source for the Tamahu. And you all tell me if these are Europeans or white people. Just by lookership, just by lookership, you know, just because that's what people do. You know, people like people tend to like lookership around here. So these figures right here, let me let me make it bigger. You see these figures right here? These are these are not um, pale painted, pink painted apricot color. You know, that remember the color crayon, Crayola crayon, apricot. We used to color. Um, we used to color people peach and apricot that's not this all right so now the question is well how do you prove ujao how do you prove that these are the tamahu and i'm only saying tamahu because that's how people pronounce it but it's really chamehu but i'm gonna show you all the difference between what we do and what other people do is and this is what i mean by if people don't approach the culture by way of the language you're handicapping, you're open for, for many mistakes. See, all of us can make mistakes. Nobody is exempt from making a mistake. But if you don't approach the culture by way of its language, you're vulnerable. You're wide open to mistakes. You know, you, you are going to make mistakes and a lot of them. But anyway, so right here, you see the word Shemehu uh, right here. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six glyphs. The, the, the three single strokes is counted as one uh, glyph. Six glyphs, that spells the word Chemehu. Some people pronounce it Chemhu. Some people say Chemehu. And, and, and the pronunciation with that E in between the consonants is purely conventional. That's, that's just the standard of what Egyptologists have done since the birth of Egyptology. All right. It has no bearing, good or bad, on understanding the meaning of any any of these words. So that's convention. So Chemehu. Um, but that's now let's read the rest of it though. It says um Ibu in Chemehu. All right. So this so so you all are getting a um a freestyle Friday because this is Friday, so we freestyling on this real quick. Um but you see Ib Ibu 
And what ibu means dance. It means to dance. You see this figure here? This is a determinative, what, we, what people call a determinative on this word, ib. So it's ibu in chimehu. So it's the dance or the dancing by the chimehu. That's what these figures are doing. And see the Libyans, the 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 um, population of Libyans called the Chimehu, they were famously known in ancient Egyptian times for their war like dances and marches and and um, configurations that they would do. And that's the dance. That's what you see them doing. See how see how my man right here is looking back backwards to this guy right here, but he's holding a staff, a stick in his hand and everything like that. They are actually dancing. And it's telling you, Ibu in Chimehu. All right. So don't let anybody tell you that the word Chimehu or how it's pronounced Tamahu means white people or Europeans. That is not the case. And so y'all have seen it here. I've Listen, I've been over this before. I'm just showing y'all this right now. Um, again, it's probably my umpteenth time showing this. Um, or oh, going over this, but anyway, so y'all, y'all get the, y'all get that. All right, so let's open it back up. What's um, did I miss anything? The mic is open on the panel. Uh, oh, we got American Dream, brother Chris. Welcome to the panel. Y'all got to you know, pass the mic around. Peace. All right, peace. Yep, I see. I see you got some Europeans on your profile picture too. I know, got them bound up. <laughs> yeah, you got them tied up and everything. <laughs> you know, uh, let me go through the chat. I, I'm probably missed some things uh, in the chat. Did I miss anything? MK, you see anything out? Uh, you probably out? did, yes. Uh, somebody asked you, is there, uh, maybe you should start from the bottom. One second. I'm going to work my way from the bottom back up. So forgive me, y'all. I'm, I'm definitely going out of order. Um, is there a word for white people? Oh, okay. So this is from uh, Iraq. Is there a word for white people then? Uh, no. There's a word for white. Yes, there's, 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 there's colors, you know, in the language. The word for white is hedge. The word hedge is the word for white, bright, brilliant. And it's, um, it's the actual name for the white crown. You have desheret, which is the word desher means red, and desheret means that which is red, and then you have um, hedge, the hedge crown, or just the word hedge, it means white. But as far as a word for white people, um, no, they didn't. They didn't have a con conceptualization of of stuff like that. Of course, they had eyes they could see, and 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 um, they saw different shades of skin tones but they didn't have a conceptualization of of categorizing human beings the way we do today in social construct of race like how we have today so they wouldn't point out white people or black people or whatever the case is you know and listen here's the trip here's a tripped out thing okay people people would like to interpret the egyptian underworld as the egyptian heaven you know, um, as a matter of fact, I think Budge has a book entitled The Egyptian Heaven and Hell. And I probably butchered the title, but it's something like that. Um, just look it up real quick. It's the Egyptian Heaven and Hell. And heaven and hell together is what people call the duat or the after underworld and, and the afterlife and all those other kind of things. But what's crazy is that. In the Book of Gates, which is a, which is a underworld text, um, it, it 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 is uh, in the fifth hour of the Book of Gates is the famous scene called the Table of Nations. People call it the Table of Nations, even though that's not what's there. I mean, it's not in the text uh, that way at all. But there's four groups. There's four popul population groups. And there's four figures representing those four. But guess who one of the four is? It's the Chimehu. 
So if the word, and, and mind you, I'm saying Chamehu because that's how it's supposed to be pronounced conventionally, but people say Tamahu. If the Tamahu is one of the four groups in the underworld, and if you could read the text, what it says, that they're in the underworld and they're protected. So if they're the white people or Europeans, what are they doing in the Egyptians' heaven? Being protected by Sekhmet. You see what I'm saying? That that like we're supposed to we're supposed to not like Europeans for the transatlantic slave holocaust and all the horrific events around that and stuff and the, and the you know the white man is the devil and and you know the enemy and and all this other kind of stuff but yet here they are in heaven with us if if the us is supposed to be the Nahisiu and the Egyptians the you know Nubians and Egyptians they're chilling with us in heaven, in our heaven, in our heaven, protected, protected by the red, the black, and the green. No, but they're protected by Sekhmet. I mean, come on, did anybody, did anybody think this through? So anyway. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so y'all y'all think about that. Y'all think about that. Um, as a matter of fact, let me see. Like I said, demonstration beats conversation, and you know, I'm trying to have a conversation that flow. I don't, I don't, you know, I want it to flow. I'm trying to encourage people to to come on um, to the panel or or speak in the chat. But let me show you all the Chamehu in the book of um, <clears throat> in the book of Gates. So. Now this is a, a reproduction, so obviously this is not a this is not a um, picture of of a wall. This is a reproduction by Carl Lepsius, and the four figures on the far right are the Chamehu. They're the Libyans, and this is from the fifth hour of the Book of Gates, and so we see Heru is ushering them in, and all of them are called the cattle of Ra, as the glyphs above their heads say. And the glyphs above their head, what's interesting about that, and I went over this before. But what's interesting about it is is that the glyphs in this text right here, it reveals that the Egyptians purposely played with words in a, in a, in a um, phenomenon we call punning. Uh, people like to call punning. They played, they had puns for words and they, they would define words by playing with the words. Anything that sounds similar, they would further define it and connect it and tie it together. So. The name of the Egyptians, Remech, is explained in this text. The name of the Amu, who are the Asiatics, is explained in this text. The name of the Nehisiu is explained in this text. And the name of the Chamehu is explained right in the text above their heads. And, you know, you all have to check out the archive video. I don't want to um, go, go over that. But I'm just saying, this is the, the quote-unquote Egyptian heaven. So they're, they're chilling. Where everybody else at? You know, what's even interesting is where the Hebrews at? <laughs> where, the, where, the, where, the Hebrew, where the Hebrews at in, 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 in this heaven? They're going to they gonna have to side with the, with the Asiatics right there. But anyway, all right, so that, enough of that. Um, am I missing anything? But let me, let me uh, people, everybody on the panel, anybody on the panel got any, any words? Because, you know, the panel... The panel takes precedence over the uh, over the chat. That's how that's how we roll. You know, if you're brave enough to fit, hit the link, then you definitely get first dibs. Brother well, Sadiq, Hotep, Hotep. I just want to see if you guys got a chance to watch that video that uh, Reggie did today. That presentation. Oh no no I haven't I haven't seen anything. No, nope. mm. but if you if you if you had to summarize it in less than three cent, maximum three sentences, what 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 is about? What is it about? Uh, mainly his conversation was about. Uh, I guess the the topic of the conversation and why it got started was, uh, the brother Thunder asked him along a couple about a month ago, where did all the black people go in Egypt? That's the actual word. So, and uh, so. Reggie, he was doing a summary on what happened with the Trans-Saharan slave trade and how it was basically um, 
every route led to Cairo. And from Cairo, all uh, all the people who were enslaved were distributed basically out to all of the rest of the regions where the Ottoman Empire was, sort of like Iraq and, and all other locations. And I just wanted to see what your input was because it kind of touched something for me. Um, I remember a few months ago I was on Clubhouse and there's a there's a sister on there she uh goes by name nefertari <clears throat> sorry uh-huh and she has this group called the black cops of egypt or something like that because she's uh she's a coptic egyptian and i remember her telling us a story about how it's not publicized and it's never talked about but she speaks about how her and her a lot of her ancestors were were basically enslaved and traded out and she, you know she's uh she hates talking about it but no one actually really gets the chance to dive, dive deep off into it and it made it made me think one day i said wow that's that's an interesting subject i would like to dive deeper into that and i remember the brother sean he's writing his book about the coming of, uh i don't want to mess his book title up but he's talking about the coming of islam in balad al sudan and okay. so uh, just that's basically what i wanted to talk about okay well yeah i, I will um yeah I, I had to check it out first because i don't you know i don't like to talk about something that i did obviously didn't see yet or anything like that but yeah, I'm just interested in what what your um, cliff note synopsis would be. So yeah, I would have to um, check it out to be able to speak on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I will. Yeah. You would probably. We. I think we can touch on it another time when you had a chance to go over the video because I thought it was a it was a great presentation and I think it's a great topic that that isn't touched on but probably needs a deeper investigation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you know my my default stance though on all those topics, and and you know a lot of them been floating around lately uh, when it comes to race. Those those race based conversations, I I really um, avoid them <clears throat> because I've been there, done that, and they 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 are dead end conversations. They're like quicksand conversations or black hole conversations. They're gonna suck you in and you're never gonna get out, and it's not productive. So I don't chime in the only time you'll hear me chime in is is just to remind people not to do it you know i don't really get into it i don't really get into those race-based conversations whenever people bring up black people white people and they're using and they're and they're and they're filtering the conversation through the lens of the social construct of race is never good you're not going to get anywhere with that and and you know time tells it and i i could sit here and take time to, to just dig up and prove it but I don't even waste my time even doing that because, you know, people are not categorized or um, you don't know who or what a person is just by their um, appearance or skin color and stuff like that that we use today. Now, it is used today. It's, it's a reality today. So, you know, I don't want people to misconstrue what I'm saying, but that's not how humans were categorized, population were category, categorized. So where did, where did this person go, that person go? You know, the 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 modern Egyptians, the the citizens of of the Arab Republic of of Egypt today, are not the ancient Egyptians. Now, if if people hear me say that, and I put a period there, and I just shut up, people hear me say that, I guarantee you, because I've done this before, I've I've done it uh, purposely just to see, and and I tested this out. When I, if I say that, people are going to jump immediately to the level of genetics. Well, the people that are still there, they are 65 percent have the genetic genetic affinities to ancient Egyptians and this and the third as if genetics will tell you um, who a people were are. Nobody identified with genetics. I mean, genetics, the human genome wasn't even mapped till 2003. So that's not that wasn't the litmus or the tool used to categorize human populations. What makes an ancient Egyptian an ancient Egyptian was never um had anything to do with dna nobody was walking around egypt 
No, no, there was no high priest of DNA. Hem DNA. You know, Wob DNA or Sim Sim D DNA. Nobody was walking around Hotep. Let me let me let me let me swab your mouth and, and, and check to see if you were an ancient Egyptian or not. Nobody was doing that. And I everybody knows that. Even when I say it, you know, people know that it's like, duh, of course they weren't. Well, the fact that they weren't should tell everyone that that wasn't the criteria of who was who. There were other things. And if we got to synchronize with that, if we're going to talk about it, other than that, you know, that's why I leave it alone. I don't deal with that black, uh, that stuff. That's, that's, that's banana and tailpipe conversation. Yeah, plus um, in these conversations, especially when it comes to the, the modern Egyptians, people always have this assumption that um, that Egypt itself, um, the people there are just one particular group of, you know, group of people, like it's just one type. And people don't know that there are actually other people there also who consider themselves in modern day as, um, as, as black people. But even in those conversations, those people, those marginalized um, indigenous uh, Egyptian people are never really the you know the, the topic of the conversation. So people, it's always a pick and choose uh, kind of thing that goes on. Yeah, I agree with that part. I just think that 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 part of the history should uh, at least be looked into because I think that's an unpart untold or. We haven't ironed out all the details of that part of the history, and I would like to, you know, know more about that. But on a sec, on another note, I was thinking about because I know there's still an outstanding issue with with the Theban mapping project, and so since I'm off from work next week, I was going to actually go up to UCLA, and I wanted to see if I could stop by the Egyptology department. Okay, listen, if you go, let me know. Because I, I, I have emailed them in the past and I emailed them recently um, about their uh, mistake on their website. They have, they have mistake in two places. They, they mislabeled um, the images. So I emailed them about it and they, 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 didn't, they didn't respond back. And that's not the first time they didn't respond. I, I emailed them like some years ago to ask if I could use one of their get permission to use one of their um images on their website commercially and you know they didn't respond to that either so i don't know if they just uh hating me down you know or or whatever the case is but yeah if you, if you go definitely let me know because well, are you, are you gonna send him to go slap him or something no, no, yeah no. yeah we in la you know we we will smith people out here <laughs> <laughs> no but i will i will i will, I will give you what my whole um, write up so that they can correct it because really they can't say like what I sent them they just have to simply say oh that's an oversight on our part thank you very much and we'll correct it that's that's all they can say they can't say anything else so I'll, I'll just make sure you have that uh, with, with you and whatnot see what they say it sounds good all right we've got brother Sosa on the on the on the um, call uh, we passed the mic around Sosa so What's going on? What's good? Yeah, yeah. Peace, 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 peace to everybody. Peace to the uh, chat and such. Uh, you know, well, you know when um, you no, know, we have when we have the conversation. Who are the ancient Egyptians? A lot of times we're talking genetically, right? Like, like n nobody thinks that. Like sometimes the argument gets switched to like, you know, the modern the modern uh, Egyptian are not practicing what the ancient Egyptian practice like nobody makes that argument like like so when we talk about it we're talking about like the people of um what are, what are the, some of the genetic foundations that make up the people of, of ancient Egypt no different than if we were to say well you know who are the Americans right now if, if we if we say well you know African Americans or Americans and Europeans that kind of convolutes the conversation and we're talking about the actual people who are what were all the genetic makeups that that, that led to the uh, what we know to become what, what, who we know to be the Egyptian, ancient Egyptians. Peace, Sosa. Can I, Sosa, can I just say something right quick? You're breaking up a little bit. Um, and a few people are actually saying that in the chat as well. 
yeah, you coming in a little bit choppy. But I did understand what you said, but yeah, you definitely uh, I ain't never, I ain't never done uh I've done it once. It's uh using like a different streaming. Yeah, you probably gotta leave out and come right back in. Alright. Yeah, try that. So I, I I'll wait for you to come back because I, I I I I heard what what the brother Sosa said and I don't wanna move on to gonna come back, then we're gonna be knee deep in another conversation. Let's see if something real quick. Uh Dundada said my email went to spam <laughs> for the uh, the thing. Sounding better on now. Uh, keep on talking. Let's see. Blase, 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 blase. Check one, two, three. Now nah, you sound like you're talking in Morse code, but I I can understand you. But it it is it is uh it's still there. So so what you so to I, 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 Hmm. I'm coming on my iPhone. See if there's a difference. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to get off that uh, Cricket Wireless, man. <laughs> they said your reception is pseudo. <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> we try the iPhone. <laughs> he, he got that Cricket, Cricket Wireless. You can have the best phone in the world, but you got that Cricket Wireless service. <laughs> but all right, so let me, let me just... Um, See if I can address something real quick while he does that. I did see something earlier. Um, what, 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 what did I miss? I saw something. Okay, yeah, Pan African Designs and Apparel. That's Brother James. He says, "What time period do we first see this reference?" Okay, I missed it because I'm not sure which, what, um, what reference he's referring to. So, so if you're still there, um, clarify that for me, and I. I see what you what you mean by that. Uh, which reference? And if you're talking about the Chimehu, then uh, yeah, just let me know. Yep, just let me know about that. Um, see anything else? iPhone is the best phone. Hi, huh, yeah. Yeah, I would have to say that right now. I'm, I'm biased. I'm Apple. I'm Apple everything now. I've been Apple everything. All right, let's see. Uh, so, so let's see what you I got. Have to say that right now. I'm biased. I've been Apple everything. Any better? Yeah. Oh, definitely, man. Hundred percent better, man. See, told you. See, you get rid of that quicker ride. Wireless, you on point. <laughs> Samsung, Samsung, bro. I got, I got, I got, I got dual options. Do what with the options? <laughs> so yeah, so I heard, I heard what you said though. Um, even though you were uh, chopping up a little bit, but um, so I don't, I hear a little echo with, with you, but it, but you sound real clear. But here's the thing. So, so yeah, everybody, everybody defaults to a genetic conversation, and that's that's fine if people understand that that's what it is. The, the the problem always comes in when people mix the layers of the conversation, the different levels of of the identity. There's you know, an echo. Yeah, I already said there's echo. So um it's an echo on Sosa's part. So but yeah, I'm so, mute, I'm, so I'm gonna mute my mic while you talk, see if that kills the echo. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna kill it. So um no, so so all I'm saying is, you know, and, I, and I've gone over this many times, is that when we talk about a, a population of people, how, how we like to talk about it on these YouTube streets and, and social media, we have to respect the different layers or levels of identity. And we, and we have to respect it and, and be aware of it. If not, then the conversation is not gonna be very useful and that's why the conversations kind of always go all over the place and people argue and, and, it, and it never really seems to move forward or it's like prolonged, like six months on the same subject instead of respecting the, the, the layers of identity. So if, if the ancient Egyptians, excuse me, if the modern Egyptians have 65% genetic affinity, um, with ancient Egyptians, if that's the case, and let's say that is the case, let's just let's just assume for the sake of the, uh, what I'm saying that that's the case. Then what? It doesn't. Um, 
say much other than what it said that you know 65 percent of that affinity and whatnot so um there's really not much to to uh say and so the conversation that's problematic Oh wait wait wait! I can't. You you sound real real low, man. Can you repeat what you said? Can you hear? Me? Yeah, there you go. Go ahead. Say it again. Yeah, I said some people. That's problematic for some because some people argue, and I think Dr. Reggie did a whole presentation on it. Is that those people aren't uh, aren't the ancient Egyptian? Those people are. Um, one group was replaced by another. That's the argument that people like you know Reggie making and others, like those people are foreigners. Like they're not; they don't have any connection to the ancient Egyptians. Yeah, well, yeah. Then they they have to address those people because that's not that's not there's not a significant number of people that say that to 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 warrant all that attention, really, because no uh, outside of of just straight war. Or, or genocide type of uh, uh, behavior and activities, people don't get like replaced, like full whole stock and wholesale replaced like that. And, you know, that's, but then still, that's still a genetic, that's still a, on a genetic conversation. And people can have that conversation, you know? But what, what makes an ancient, but see, here's the thing. The argument really comes from the ancient Egyptians, not genetically. But the ancient Egyptians in terms of of who represented that culture over there and the people there now don't represent that culture. And I don't think anybody really has a problem with that. Like you said earlier, you, you, you said that at first you said people don't argue that the modern Egyptians are practicing ancient Egyptian culture. But but as easy as that said and understood, that's really the should be the heart of the conversation, not not the genome on a genomic level. Because that, you know, that doesn't really inform of anything other than biology. Like, okay, we have a biological conversation. All right, the modern, Egypt, modern Egyptians, they have a higher affinity to the ancient Egyptians, to the limitations of, of what they do know about the ancient Egyptians in terms of the genomes that they have stored and compared to, then okay. And, like, all right. The yeah. Yoruba and Igbo have a genetic affinity to each other, but they're two distinct groups. So if we're having an anthropo a cultural anthropologic conversation, then we then you know then you jump to the biology, then you're kind of uh, hacking or sidestepping the conversation. Yeah, and I was gonna add that um, usually, um, I mean, those conversations. The reason why it's usually say that um, it's uh, talking about genetics in that conversation can be sometimes it can be termed as being out of places. There's also a reason why you don't see, um, you know, the conversations, the academic conversations where the, um, you know, the, 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 the quest is to figure out who the ancient Egyptians were and, and all that. You never really see um, genetics brought up for good reason. You know, you will see, um, you know, cultural stuff brought up, artifacts brought up and, and, you know, things of that nature that actually, you know, can be used legitimately to tell. But um, just for, for the genetics purposes, you will never see like um, that being, um, you know, part of that conversation that is brought up in, 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 you know, when, when trying to figure, to figure that out. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, if we, if we wanted to have a biological conversation for hip hop, you, that would be a different conversation than, than a non-biological conversation about hip hop. When I say hip hop, I'm talking about the whole hip hop culture from from b boying, break dancing, MCing, the uh, um, the artwork, the tags on the trains, the buildings, and stuff like that. Everybody that laid that cemented that foundation to to emerge that what we now call the whole hip hop culture. Um, it would be two different conversations if one focused on biology and the other one did not. So, so it's like, okay, well, where, where is the conversation placed at? What, what is the orientation of the conversation? And that's, and that's all I, I try to point out. And if it's, if it's rooted in the social construct of race and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, all right, y'all, you know, other people deal with that. I'm, I'm, I'm over here on the, 
on the on the more meaty side of the culture because culture is 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 what's the interesting thing because dna doesn't tell you what culture person practice or language a person spoke or even how they behaved yeah but don't. there's some uh there's some uh okay in terms of okay who are the americans right we talked about who built um uh to knock to the land okay those would be a different American as if we were to say who built the White House. Even though both of them are American, right? We would have to distinguish a, a founder population versus a uh, versus a you know who's an immigrated population. Yeah, very low. Yeah, I'm saying right, in terms of uh, Native American, right? Yeah. If we were to know well who built those, then those Americans would be different than the Americans that built the White House, even though they're both um, even though both they even though they're both Americans. Yeah, but you see know? the yeah 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 I get it, but the but the here again the problem lies in how how are people defined? How how is a group of people defined? They're not defined by their genetics. It's never done that way. They're defined by elements of culture, like what, what emerges as what we call the umbrella term culture. So it's, it's the culture of people that gives them their identity and distinction. And for us to, to say, okay, that's them. It's not, it's not genetics. And, and the case in point, Yoruba and Igbo, Igbo people, they're, they're distinct, but they're the same genetic pool. So Native Americans and and the the um the later Americans coming here from 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 Britain and, and colonizing the the thirteen colonies and spreading and so on and so forth, um, we can distinguish those two culturally. So when we say who built what, you're not saying what, what set of genes can, built it, what set of genes built can, it. You're saying what, we can what, also, what culture is res responsible. Yeah, but we can also distinguish them genetically, right? Distinguish who genetically? Oh, the between Americans, Americans, the Native Americans from from um, the the Europeans, the Europeans, the European yeah. Americans from Native Americans. Yeah, we can yeah, distinguish can. them culturally and genetically. You know what I'm saying because we know like one was here first, mm -hmm. and then one came later. So you know, what I mean, genetic. So the best the best usage would be genetic in terms of right, because we we once we get genetics, we we can even rule out. Uh, anything coming later because well, the, the, the genetics is not there, so it's a, it's a non But can you, can you actually um, use or, or even uh, prove or, or a, that the same phenomena that you're that you're using the example of happened in ancient Egypt? Because as we know, um, uh, you know, Egypt first and foremost, that's um, you know, is is uh, thousands of years of civilization, correct? And then you don't have people coming in and then. Um, there's genocide evolved where there's a group of people who just disappear and there's very little of them left that never mingle or, 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 or integrate into, you know, in a culture with the other people who, uh, you know, committed the genocide. So to even use that example, you'd actually have to be able to um, prove or to, or to show evidence, um, sorry, in this case, that the same phenomena that you're using of America is actually the same phenomena that happened in ancient, in ancient Egyptian civilization. But you also have to keep in mind that this is not a 400 year period, this is a you know, thousands of years period. And then obviously it's a culture that had different, in the interaction between um, the people in that culture is was very, very diff different. So you have to put those into consideration before you try to, to uh, you know, make, you know uh, put those side by side and make them similar. But here's the here's the thing. Are the Native Americans Native Americans because of their genes or are they the Native Americans because of their culture? And so if you if you if you if you deal with cultural anthropology, they do not define human populations by way of genetics. That's just that's just some pseudo stuff to do. So the thing is, like, I, I always I keep using the Igbo and Yoruba. So if we if we take that same logic and we and we want to ask the question between the Igbo and the Yoruba people, 
who built X? And let's say X is this extraordinary uh, structure, right? Who built it? If you go to genetics, you you you're gonna be lost because the Igbo and the Yoruba people are from the same genetic population, but they're but they're from two distinct groups, and you will not be able to answer that question. And so anthropologists knows this. And they know the value of bio, bio, uh, biogenetics and stuff and what it informs us of versus what culture and all other stuff informs us of. And so we have to understand and respect each, you know, each set of tools and which tools to use. You're not going to use a screw gun to perform open heart surgery, even though a screw gun is a, is a very valuable tool for something else, but it's not the appropriate tool. And so that's the problem people are doing. They're using genetics inappropriately. You, you just don't do it. Human populations are not defined by genetics. No one does that except for the YouTube streets. Well, like I said, we won't do it in terms of, I think the Native Americans is a bad example because the Native Americans definitely established uh, through genetics. That's who they established who they were. What is the population base that made up the Americas? They did it through uh, genetics, right, to rule out uh, you know, the whole African concept of different populations coming over. Then, no, 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 no. These people are closely related to these people. These people came through the Barren Strait. They're genetically linked to these people. So they use gen genetics to establish who the Native Americans were, right? And then and then the different Wait, cultures. When you say they, when you say that, are you talking about the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the government and the and the and the I'm legislation that that that, the that sets them aside and stuff. No, I'm talking about the anthropologists, the people that are, the people that are looking at the population and who came who and who who or what when they came where. The well, that, 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 well, that informs of migratory patterns and migrations on a on on that on a genetic population level, but not not who who built what and and this and that, because you you can have the same you can have the same or well, very close gradient of genetic markers between two distinct cultures in Central America building, you know, what we call the Mayans and the Aztecs and, and even the Olmecs and stuff like that. Uh, they could have very similar gradient or similar genetic markers. And, and that's just not the tool to understand, okay, who, who built what or whatever the case is. They, they, don't, they don't say the Olmecs are the Olmecs because of genes. No, no, no. That's, I mean, that's different when you're talking about the Native Americans because they're still Asians. So in terms of, let's say, let's take Egypt, Egyptians and Nubians. Wait, so do the, You said they're Asians. That, now that was confusing right there. They said they're Asians, but they're, they're Native Americans. That, that didn't even make sense right there. I mean, they share, they share more components with Asians and, and Europeans than, 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 say, do Africans, right? So they're distinct, right? We know who the Native American population is, right? So in terms of, let's say, Nubia, and Egyptians are okay. they uh, are they genetically close? Uh, don't don't know. They're culturally different, so that's what matters. They're not the same people. They're not the same people. Even if they were genetically close, they're not the same people. Now they don't know that. They don't. They don't know. They don't have enough information for that. To make that determination, and, I, and, I, and I'm and I'm saying let's let's say let's say they are. Let's just fast forward and, and assume assume that they are genetically genetic from the same genetic population. That don't mean that they're the same people, like the Yoruba and Igbo. They're genetically the same population, but they're distinct. You you cannot call a Yoruba person Igbo and and expect not to get your uh your ear chewed out. Yeah, in terms of culture, like I said, we're switching now. You're switching the culture genetically. But culture is what makes a people a people, though. That's what I, I'm, I mean. I don't think you, you're not getting that. The conversation was cemented on genetics. That's why we switched, we switched the culture. Like we were talking. Yeah. About, like, we're talking about genetics alone. We were talking about how certain people are genetically linked. Like we we're talking about genetics. So genetically linked. Can't hear you. Yeah, you sound real, real low. No, what I'm saying, you were, we were talking about people being genetically linked, and then you went from genetically linked. To cultural differences that's 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 different no, okay like i was okay. staying on the lines of genetics like not yeah culture. so culture can okay but here's here but here okay here's my point though a genetic conversation is a genetic conversation 
So that, that's why I said, you asked me if the Egyptians are genetically the same as the Nubians. And I'm saying that, that let's say that they are. But the fact that, that even if they're the same genetically, let's just say that they are. The fact that we're distinguishing them by saying the same genetic people are two different people by words. One is Egyptian, one is Nubian, should inform us that they're two different people. And it should also inform us that genetics does not define a people. But so let's just so it doesn't really do anything for us like that. The, the genetic conversation, yeah. we can have a genetic conversation. And I yeah, can say, I'm, hey, arguing. I'm arguing that genetics define a people. I'm just talking about I'm using, like I said, the conversation that we was having. This oh, you, you fade out. It sounds like you must be using headphones. I mean, a microphone or something. It's, it gets covered up or something. I can't hear you. I'm trying to talk into it. I said a conversation that we was having, you can hear it was around the population of a particular place. But I mean, other people jump on a panel and the conversation kind of gets moved to here and there, there and there. Mm -hmm. And then we end up mixed up in conversation. But we were talking about, you know, backflow, North African backflow into the region uh, in general with the population bases. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the, the Sahara drying up. It was centered around, you know, genetic and population of people. But then it switched the culture like later on. Yeah, well if the if yeah, if the if the conversation about genetics, yeah, I mean that's that's a cool conversation to have. But I just I just don't um I don't think that it should be confused. So yeah, I mean if people want to have a genetic conversation, who migrated where, who went who left, who back migrated, and all that, day, hey, that's cool. That's cool. Ooh, but right. but but don't but don't bring up the identity of, of people then. Just talk about genetic populations. And people gotta understand there's a difference between a genetic population and, and and the boundaries that define that population versus a culturally defined population of people. And culture is the expression of what we see and what's left behind, not the genetic population. Because, you know, that doesn't have the expressions. The expressions are done by the culture. You can have, you know, many different people with different um, genetic, uh, what do you call it, um, genetic uh, affinities to whatever, but are all part and parcel of the same culture and, and do things for that culture and expand the culture and everything like that. And that's what defines the people. So, yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem with, with bio. I mean, I actually like biogenetics. Um and DNA, I, I like that stuff, recombination and everything like that. You know, I took a um, a short course in that. So, I mean, I, I like it. I'm doing my own genealogy. I'm, I'm one of the people in my family that's responsible for our um, whole family tree that, you know, I, I inherited that along with my sister. So I'm, I'm fascinated with that stuff. But I, I know enough about it not to confuse the different layers. You don't you don't define a people by their gen their genes. Just don't do that. Hey, yeah. can I, um... I think, uh, okay, look, real quick, um, I, I was going to say just to finish that off is um, I think it's like the best tool for the best job. Um, if, if the objective of having those conversations is to figure out who the people are, then the best tool you can use is always culture. You know, that will um, get you far than, you know, um, what you're trying to do with genetics as you know and you know going with just what has been said, uh, you know, because you can have people um, that share the same genetics. Um, Genetics and they're two completely different people. They identify themselves. Their culture is very different. Everything they do is very different. And when you're trying to learn who those people who did a particular thing lived a certain way, did something, then the best tool will always be, um, you know, um, culture. And then obviously considering that um, that with the genetics you're very limited at this point because you're looking at a three thousand year civilization and you don't have the the, the enough data to actually um, give you um, a reading of all those, um, the different locations, the different times, the different dynasties, all that kind of stuff. So you, you're very, very limited as it is. And then not just limited, but you're using the tool that will not get you the best results for the job that, you, that, 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 that you're trying to, to seek. Yeah, it depends on when you yeah. say who we are, if we're talking about culture or if you're talking about E1B1A. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of it that y'all see is that, you know, a lot of it comes with the fact that the modern day Egyptians don't look like Sub-Saharan Africans. 
So 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 it 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 go it's not once that is brought up in terms of phenotype and hair, we're not at that point you know we're not even having a cultural conversation. Because those people can culturally be ancient Egyptians, all they gotta do is practice the same thing the ancient Egyptians did. But a lot of the uh, the negative responses come from the fact that those people that currently don't look like uh, what your sub-Saharan African would look like. And, and and that's where the argument starts from and then it spirals in different directions from there. Yeah, yeah, that's just wrong. Once you get to look at ship, then you, like you said, that's, that's, that's off anyway. So you're just off to, you know, your rabbit hole. Hey, so, so I know you guys do a lot of uh, the back migration stuff. Have you looked into the proto-Afro-Asiatic people? I'm sorry if you said something you didn't come through. So you talking about language, Afro-Asiatic? Talking about language? No, yeah, the proto-Afro-Asiatic speakers. Have you looked into that? Yeah, yeah, somewhat, somewhat. Because they say that uh, there's a potential that those are like the Omotic speakers in like Ethiopia, who eventually like uh, spread into North Northeast Africa. <laughs> Even DNA wise, they actually started. They're thinking that that's the possible pattern. Well, I mean, there's like, I mean, I think different people have different arguments. DNA wise, though, I don't think the the, the the DNA argument doesn't ain't there yet. Because in terms of DNA, they, they, like I said, they're limited, and they tend to say that those the people there are the people that that always been there. So. Yeah, but the DNA, the DNA is like, I mean, I don't really like the DNA conversation anyway. No, I mean, I just use it because you brought it up as, you know what I mean, but in terms of, you, you said linguistic and DNA. That's why I just challenge the DNA part of it. But linguistic, yeah, they're different arguments. I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with what you said in terms of linguistics. But the DNA. Hey, can I ask a question real quick? Go okay. ahead. Um, yeah, a great discussion, by the way. Um, so if, if I can, the, the idea of, of, of us being black people or, or, or Africans, is that, is that tied to um, defining people as genetic, based on genetics or based on culture? Because it's, it's appearing to me that, it, that it, it would be based, to call ourselves black people seems to be you know, basing it on genetics, basing our, our, our unity on genetics, um, which Wujawu now kind of seems to be saying is, is not how people are defined. Um, because, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm hoping um, Wujawu could, could, could you respond to that a little bit? So, okay, all I'm saying is that we have, we have valuable tools at our disposal. You know, especially here in 2022, we have a lot of tools that we didn't have before that we, you know, we, we gained access to. And we have a lot of evidence, you know, ongoing evidence and stuff like that. The problem I'm seeing is that people are misusing the tools for for the research question or or, you know, the job at hand. And I say you, you never use a, a screw gun for open heart surgery, but you definitely use a screw gun to hang drywall. You know, that, that's that's your go to tool. And so I think that because we are aware of the tools, but people may not understand how to use them and what they're used for and don't take time to study it, that we just kind of go all over the place collectively. I'm saying collectively, not I'm not speaking about any one person. So when it comes to identifying people, it is known that 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 is usually at the level of ethnic group or ethnology, the study of of distinct groups and their differences and relationships to each other and 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 the rest of the world. No, that's I, through, I that, absolutely, that's, I absolutely that's, that's agree through. with you. I think I think everything you're saying makes perfect sense. Um, my, my question though is like, how would because in my estimation, the the Black Power movement uh, and you know it is based on seeing Black people as as one based on their genetics um so i'm just saying what what would that say to the 
to that to like you know the validity of that movement if it was basing our unity on genetics and you know and and because now what you're saying is a people is not defined by genetics so if a people is not defined by genetics what what exactly does the term black people mean because it can't right. really mean it can't really have anything to do with culture cuz you know there is no such thing as just a one black culture like culture when it comes to black right. people is so varied um like so you know the idea of black people or even african people just it just doesn't make sense under no, the right. guise of culture um so um so the only sense it makes sense under is when we're talking about black people in terms of genetics but if genetics doesn't define a people what does the term black people mean okay that's an excellent question and i just want to disclaimer we got five minutes left because i you know my whole thing is that i'm trying to limit these to two hours and i'm and i'm trying to be i'm trying to stick to that but just to quickly address that and then we could pick up on this because because uh, you know this conversation is is cool you know i just want li to limit this video to two hours but quickly um you hit it on the head and then you didn't hit it on the head so black th to define a group of people genetically it does nothing that's why as black people if we define the we, W-E, we define the we on the genetic level or the basis of genetics, which is which is really the proxy that we're using for race or race is a proxy for, then we're not going to be successful. And that's and that's a big part in why we're not successful to this very day in gaining agency. You know, we, we, we gain we're making gains, but we're not gaining agency in at any rate that's significant for us to to really make some stuff happen and so it's because we're using the wrong tool we're defining ourselves in the in the muddy vague wishy-washy um social construct of race and underpinning it with genetics because genetics is a si is science that that's more surgical and precise but we're not even using that really we're using the proxy of the social construct of race is by using the term black people which is a a social class it's not it's not even genetics, not even dealing with genetics. So so that's why we fail. Ultimately, why we fail. That's why I say and, and, and I would love to unpack this. But I say when people say black power, I say there is no power in black. So stop saying black power. And so the, bo the bottom line is that what makes p people triumphant and do things is when people come together on at the very least the ethnic level. Not the not the uh, racial level, because race, you, you, it doesn't just because you're black skin or your skin is the same shade as mine does not mean you're of me because we will we, we will be enemies of each other all day long. We see it all the time all across the United States in certain cities where, you know, people of the quote unquote same race are off in each other, killing each other, doing harm to one another and stuff like that. So you cannot be the same people. If you're killing each other. And so we, so and you're not going to get anything done if you got to watch your back or, you, or you're in the, in the business of killing each other. So the people who get along will be much more successful at any undertaking than, than two groups of people who are banging, banging on each other. And so in terms of success and getting things done, it's, it's, it definitely where the rubber hits the road. It will be at at. Um, um, as far as a study would be the, at the ethnic level, not at the racial level. That's that's and that's childish stuff. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. So so you know, like I said, I, we got. I mean, I know I just said something that's probably controversial. People are like, "What? What the heck?" You know, and everything. But um, I do want to make this hard stop. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the mic, and if y'all have some 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 quick things to 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 say, go for it. You know. We will do that. So I'm I'm gonna uh, mute myself out. Hey Sosa, when if you get a chance, uh, I don't know if you're still there. Sosa, you still there? Yeah, he got he got that uh cricket wireless Samsung. Okay. I was gonna tell him if he gets a chance. There's an article. It's called. Uh, I would like to hear his opinion on it if he when he gets a chance to read it. It's called the Ethiopian Genetic Diversity Reveals Linguistic Stratifications 
and complex influence on the Ethiopian gene pool. It's a it's an American Journal of Human Genetics article. And then can you can you I'm sorry, can you post it in in this oh yeah. back chat that that way yeah. um we could post yeah, it because yeah. I'm not sure if you can okay. post it. Yeah, I'll do that. And then uh, there's also the origins of Afroasiatics by Christopher Eric. I'm gonna post it right in the back. All right. Uh, yeah. Can 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 you hear me? Just real quick, Pan African Designs. Yeah. If you if you if your um if your comment that I'm highlighting on the screen is directed to me, not answering the question, just clarify that so I make sure that I do before I go because I don't want to leave a rock on turn, but I, I do want to have a hard stop, but, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is, this is American dream. Um, if I can, um, yeah, the last thing I, I would just want to say, cause this is, this is like blowing my, my brain tonight. Um, pause. Um, but, um, I guess if, if, if people are defined, if a people is defined by its culture, by culture and, and not genetics, like, you know, the question in my head is, is what is the point of, of going back in in history to find out who we are as a people, um, it it would like the only thing that would make sense to me is if is if we were more focused on what we're doing now and and creating our own culture, like just going back in in history, like under the guise of defining people as a culture, looking back in history just doesn't make sense to me to figure out who we are. Um, it, we would have to be kind of like living. Our, our own culture and and trying to adapt something else wouldn't necessarily make sense to me um like trying to figure out what culture to go back to to adapt here Man, it just wouldn't make you, sense i to don't me. know you, what Ed, you, american dream has been drinking tonight but he's hitting everything on point like i don't know what's going on so no, listen you, i haven't, you're, I haven't you're, been you're drinking preaching. in fairness yeah no 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 I, uh, uh you the point is you're you're hitting the points you're 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 pre, you're actually the preacher preaching to the choir at this point and what you're saying, not knowing it. So, so you're on point with what you're saying. So mm -hmm. the reason why we look in the past is as a resource, not to, because remember, see, I, I think a lot of it has to do with people's, our collective misunderstanding of what culture is and what it's good for. And so, you know, we got to really unpack that. And we actually do need to come up with our own culture where, where, you know, we can thrive and have agency in. And so we try to do the Sankofa and reach back and fetch a culture. But any culture that we reach back and try to fetch, it's not, it was not pressured and built and emerged from the same pressures and things that we are dealing with right here, right now. And so we have to have something that's forged based on the pressures that we're facing now and whatnot. But the older cultures that we come out of emerge from in terms of our lineage and, 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 um, and, and all the way back to antiquity, we can use those as resources. And, and we could learn from it. We could, we, could, we, could, we could find out what to do, what works, what doesn't work and stuff like that. But we can't expect a culture that was designed and forged from a different geographical location, different um, topological, uh, to to topographical location, different uh, circumstances, different time and everything like that. We can't expect that to um, that same pressure to be useful for us um, somewhere else and elsewhere and under different pressures. You know, like for I'll give you a quick example, for instance, and, and I'm three minutes over, um, like a lot of people want to convert to Yisheshe and Ifa tradition or be, become Yoruba. And the culture of Yoruba and, and over here in the United States. Now, we live in the United States. We have a certain government from the local, local state and, and um, federal level and things like that. We are, we are pressured. We are influenced by things that are not the same over there in Nigeria. Nigeria has a different government different way of doing government and stuff like that, that, that the way that they do things have no effect on us over here and vice versa. None of their laws that they, that they come up with to solve their problems there have anything to do with us here. And, and we're not under their jurisdiction and whatnot. I'm just using it as a quick example. And so we can't expect that to, to inform us or do anything for us here. 
and I'm just using the law thing without getting into the religious part or, or the belief part of things, because that's a whole nother long conversation. But just as an to illustrate my point is that you're on point. We actually need to crystallize and, and bring into existence our own culture that fits us and gives us back the agency and control and and lets us prosper and thrive. Now, we do have a culture, and this is something that people misunderstood what um, what I was saying, what the brother Samotep was saying. We have a culture, but um, but it's it's a culture born out of like a reactionary defensive survival. And that's not a a a, a um, you know, a proper way of, of establishing a culture. All right, so I, you know I'm I'm five minutes over, and you know, like I said, I, I need to have these hard stops. I gotta I gotta stay disciplined. So, so I'm a, I'm gonna mute my mic, and uh, Mika hasn't had a chance to speak. Um, but American Dream, let's let we could pick back up on this. Everybody in the in the in the chat, you know, we could pick back up on this another time because I'm, I'm gonna try to you know do this often, but I want to keep these videos short. So um, absolutely, thank you so much. All right, no problem. So uh, Emmy Cat and Mika, I think you all didn't have a chance to speak yet. I'll let Mika go first. Okay. Uh, while you're checking your mic, Mika, welcome, by the way. And I would just, I don't really, what I wanted to say, I think at this point, uh, American Dream has said everything that I would have liked to say. And um, yeah, so that's about it. And culture is fluid. Culture solves the problems of the people. Traditions are more static. So at the end of the day, the culture is supposed to solve um, the problem. So even if you reach back and sunk over to other things, you always want to find uh, want to find and seek stuff that uh, or things that actually can solve the problems that you're facing at the point where you are. So you don't want to be stuck. But I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I'm actually surprised today that you know, uh, you know, that American Dream just pretty much, um, <laughs> you know, uh, surprised me today. So I'm kind of speechless right now. But he actually, what he said uh, is exactly what we've been saying. Why you, you know, you don't want to uh, identify yourself with a flat black. Obviously, on the continent, that is never done because everybody would call themselves black. But that there's a reason why you have people calling themselves Maasai. You have uh, other people calling themselves Zulu. You know, other people calling themselves Igbo and all that. But even though you look at them and you think they're all black, uh, they also identify distinctify them themselves from the other black people. And that's because, um, you know, obviously, you know, uh, human as you know, humans have this, um, you know, nature to find and and to to have people where they share the same ideals with. And if, if no uh, population like on the continent would have where everybody's thinking in the same way or solving problems in the same way because of the different diversities with the environment, with, you know, things that they're facing, their modes of living. And that's why you have this thing called culture. But yeah, uh, thank you, American Dream, for just outlining all that for us. And I'll say, get an affair. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Um, I think Mika fell off. Yeah, so, um, all right, so good. I get a chance to, I get a chance to, I'm here well, echo. Let me, a, let me get a say, let me get a say. Oh, okay, even, I didn't, I didn't see you there, so. Yeah, I, I and, and even the, with, with the SAR thing, I disagree with the SAR because like, um, every culture is, uh, is, uh, is a offspring of reaction. Right, so there's this that's what that's that's what culture um develops from, right? And the environment being a catalyst. The environment is a catalyst for everything, even even genetics and evolution. So like so so every culture is derived from a reaction. So like even with a sorrow and hotel, I kinda disagree with even with him saying African Americans don't have a culture. Well that's not see, that's the problem. People need to listen very close. That's not what was said. African Americans have a culture. We don't have our own culture. That was that was made distinct. And so you got to understand the, the difference of why that's why that's said. We have a culture. But notice that if you if you if you were to outline African American culture that we do have, um, the majority of people are going to turn to the arts. They're going to talk about drums. They're going to talk about dance. They're going to talk about um, uh, singing music and things like that 
And so in Asar's presentation and in, in the presentations that I've done on this topic, you, 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 work, you start from a set of definitions of what culture is and the elements that make it up. And within that context and everything, you will clearly see that we're lacking in, in, in having a actual bona fide culture, um, our own bona fide culture. But we do have a culture. Example of a culture that is, that is distinct. That's distinct? What do you mean? Dis distinct? Okay, you went, you went, you went, you went real low. No, you said that African Americans don't have something that that's our own, right? So, yeah. Okay, so let me so let me so let me, so let me ask you this: what, 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 what type of human being does uh, does or, or does African American culture uh, set out to produce? The the, the existing African American culture, what type of human being does that set out to produce? Uh, I, I would say it's set out to produce forward thinking individuals who are who who want to thrive in a in a place where they may be systematically oppressed. Okay, are okay. we is that is that actually happening? <laughs> yeah, it's happening. Like why why would you think is that's not happening? Is the question. <laughs> like we, we thrive. We, we are starting to thrive. We will be thriving in a place that we, we are systematically oppressed. If it wasn't happening, we'd still be slaves. We wouldn't have civil rights. Okay, so you're you're helping to make the case. Let me ask you this: Did you did you watch um, Asar's presentation? Yeah, yeah, I watched some of it, but I, I I know like he was using um basically he was using Amos Wilson as the authority on what culture is. So, you know what I mean? If, we, if we're kind of governing it by Amos Wilson, you know what I mean? But I can still disagree with certain points. Like, I just, like, well, he, he, I just gave you an example of. He's a combination saying, of, of. Yeah, but I'm uh, saying you said, that give it, you said give an example of what an African-American culture is, is trying to produce. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm saying what, 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 what would you say the culture is trying, what type of human being that the culture is trying to produce? And you said you said a, a thriving human being um, that's basically triumphant through oppression. Okay, you 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 you, you went out. It's exactly, because that's that's the environment that that we're in. So first and foremost, we need to create those types of individuals, those types of individuals that can. Um, push through that and become Supreme Court justices and senators and, and presidents and, and in the mm -hmm. face of it that's what African American culture strives to be. Okay. All right, so yeah, this so this is this is this will be an interesting conversation and I just I'm I'm twelve minutes over, man, and I really have to I'm doing my best to stick to my word to myself <laughs> and really do it. But uh but remember, remember what we're saying. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to have these conversations, these open, chill, coming and chill sessions and stuff, even though that's not specifically about ancient Egypt. But but, I, you know, definitely don't mind talking about that on the channel. So but let, let's pick up on it. I don't want to I don't want to miss that because that's that's like an ongoing topic anyway. But I, I would say try to watch all of Asar's, um presentation, though. And and I'm, I have I have one that I was going to do on um defining the we you know that personal first person singular personal uh, uh pronoun plural pronoun we you know we say us and we all the time when we when we have these conversations but we but we and, and i'm using we even as i say this we never really define the we and i think that if we start to to focus on that we'll realize how important that is and how how we neglected that and and that could be a um one of the sources of our problems the rate of success that we're having because we're having success as a as a as a people but it's the rate of that success that um that's troubling but uh i see asar asar says he's in atlanta so asar if you if you still Matt, i'm sorry i'm gonna I'm hit i'm gonna call you up if you say you're in atlanta i don't know how long you're here but uh 
uh see where you are man we hook up go go live man we could <laughs> we could stir up stir up the youtube streets <laughs> go live real quick maybe you're gonna stop off at a at a uh, i don't know where where you're stopping off to eat or whatever but um but hey Sosa, but i appreciate you coming and and don't don't forget what you're saying though because i i just want to have a um keep this video short and we could pick up on it and same thing american dream and, and Brother Sadiq and everybody that, that tuned in and um, part of the panel. All right, but we, we'll fire up another another live, pick up on it. Don't, just don't forget what you, what, what's what been said, because I won't. All right, so, oh, Asar says he's at Magic City. That's that's what y'all saying? He's at he's at Magic City? <laughs> he says he's, he's at the, at the suspect club. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, all right, so yeah, I, I enjoyed the conversation, and um, we're going to roll out, and um, see you all next time, all right? And y'all stay safe out there in the uh, corona streets. We're still in the pan pandemic, y'all. We haven't declared it. Uh, they haven't downgraded it just yet, whatever, because I see people, boy, they act like everything is everything. Not cool. Not yet. All right. So I'm going to say Shimon Hotep, and I'll see y'all next time.